Carl here from Metal Wannie, and today I am joined by a gentleman who is not only one of my personal favorite personalities to talk with, he is both great guy and mastermind behind Symphonic Metal Titans Epica, and of course the mighty Mayan. It is my genuine pleasure to once again hang out with Mr. Mark Janssen. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to chat once again. Thank you for such a great introduction. <laughs> yeah, my sincere pleasure, man. It's all the truth. So, the new record, uh, Gianna, am I pronouncing that right? Yes, that's correct. Wonderful. Uh, it's due out soon on uh, September 21st, and it's a very yes. cool album, man. You guys have already teased fans with some behind-the-scenes stuff and some tracks. How has the initial response been treating you so far? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really overwhelmed because, uh, I, I, yeah... The first reviews that got in, and that we we saw now, I think, twelve or thirteen, they were all good, and uh, even some ten out of tens. So uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah, really happy about it, and uh, I, I guess the hard work is paying off. <laughs> Absolutely, man, and, you, and the record is great, you totally earned it, and one of the many great things about the record is, of course, you guys utilizing the many talents of uh, the City of Prague Philharmonic Orchestra, who sound wonderful throughout it, and I know the last time we spoke, we got into some depth about uh, Epica's use of an orchestra, and I'm kind of curious as to how Mayan eventually followed suit. What was it about Mayan, uh, was it about giving the band the same scope that an orchestra lent to Epica, or was it something else entirely? Yeah, uh, the 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 Epica album did, did set a certain standard, and uh, to be honest, I, I didn't want to to go back to a lower standard with with Mayan. So I said to our producer Yost, "How can we make this happen? That the the new Mayan album sounds as great as the the last Epica album." And then he said, "We can make that happen. The only thing we we don't have is a is a real orchestra." And then I thought, yeah, we, we need to make that happen as well. We just had, didn't have the, the budget to, to make it happen. And uh, uh, so that's why we did the, the Indiegogo campaign. And fortunately, we, the fans did help us out in a great way. So we managed to do it. And like this, we could do the, the production we had in mind. We, we were dreaming of. And uh, even though with limited resources, we could have the production that uh, is, is not less than the, la the last Epica production in my eyes, in my opinion, I mean. And uh, so I'm a really happy man. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. And, you know, Mayan, you guys are going to be three albums deep into the band's existence very soon. And it must be very cool for you because, you know, what was once, uh, you know, a, a side project has now become its own kind of very much unique force to be reckoned with and you know as it continues to pick up steam and then at the same time having Epica in as much demand as it is when you're trying to balance both is it is it a pleasure or is it a strain or is it kind of a combination of the two it's kind of a combination of the two because uh, when when Epica is, is tour, touring a lot in this in these moments uh, when Epica is touring a lot it's it can be hard sometimes to to combine but uh, for example, now Epica will uh, will do a, a kind of sort of sabbatical where we uh, take some time off. And now, for example, it's, it's an ideal situation because I can now go full force with Mayan. And uh, so it uh, it's like, yeah a little bit of both. It can be sometimes demanding to to have two bands at the same time, but sometimes it's like a, it's like a gift. Because uh, without Mayan at this point, then uh, it would be maybe a, b a bit long without playing shows for me. I would maybe get bored. And uh, even though sometimes breaks are needed uh, to reload batteries, uh, I, I really love being on, uh, on stage. So that, that now Mayan can, can in, a, in a good way, fill the gap is perfect for me. I think, yeah, you definitely thrive off your creative workaholic nature. I, I, I can't imagine you without it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I'd also need some rest sometimes, but I'm, I'm a restless person uh, in general. And when, when, I, when I can be creative, for me, that is also rest in a way. So if I, if I can be creative, then I, I feel happy. And, and yeah, that's what life is about, being happy. So... Some people are happy by laying uh, at the beach for, for three weeks. I, that wouldn't make me happy. Of course, sometimes I like to be at the beach as well, but not for, for three weeks. I would get bored. I get happy when I, when I can be creative. So for me, 
being creative, even though it's, it seems for, for many people like working all the time, for me it's like, uh, in a weird way, also some rest. Of course, man, of course. And now, Mark, I mean, you're a gentleman who has a couple of strings to his bow, I think that would probably be fair to say. That's actually probably putting it lightly, even. Uh, and you've said before, you know, that when Mayan began, it, well, it was for fun, but now you want to see how far you can take it. So I'm kind of curious yeah. as to how it went from one to the other. I mean, while your respective projects share areas of common ground, you know, they also differ in their own way, too. So I'm kind of curious... Yeah. Uh, you know, does each band scratch a different itch for you, or what was it that made you pursue Mayan as a full-time endeavor also? Yeah, yeah, first of all, uh, the, the, the big difference is also as well that I play in Epica guitar as well, and in Mayan I just focus on the vocals. Mm -hmm. For me that's also a very nice uh, variation. And uh, when when I have done many tours with, with Epica, I, I really look forward to do some some shows again while just being the vocalist and not having to to, to play the guitar and when i did uh, many shows with mine i i really looking forward to play guitar again so it also uh, works well for me like that uh, but second of all yeah it started off as a project uh, just to to have some fun to make some different kind of music but also to work with uh Jack Drissa again the the guy that i really liked working with a lot uh, in my After Forever period. So that was another reason to, to do this. And and third of all, uh, I always had in mind already that sooner or later, Epica would start touring a little bit less because Epica is a very heavy touring band, but you cannot keep up with that pace uh, forever. So I thought if, if one day comes the moment that Epica will take it a little bit more easy, then uh, maybe Mayan can step in and uh, so th these were the reasons and, and now I think it's time to that we get the right time to make it a real band and I'm, I like challenges and uh, I really want to see how far we can take it indeed and uh, it, it doesn't have to become as, as big as Epica and, and it's also maybe not realistic but definitely we can make uh, make some steps forward and that's already happening I notice already that now more festivals are already uh, approaching us to book us for for next uh, summer and uh, so i notice already there's something going on and uh, yeah let's let's just see where it what what takes us Awesome. And, and speaking of the respective challenges that each band, uh, you know, you know, demands of you, one of which I would imagine for Mayan is that there, it, you guys, you have a significantly big lineup. Is it kind of hard to get the stars to align, to get everybody in at the same time to create a tour and, you know, everything that comes with this project? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it doesn't, it doesn't make it easier. And uh, we, we didn't make it easy for ourselves. But uh, I must say, when, when we... We, we thought about it and uh, also many people said it to us hey maybe the band is too big but I all, all the time say it's also what makes the band unique and uh, there's already so many bands with with one singer and if we would have done that I think it would be much harder to to stand out and and, and do something that uh, that draws some some attention and uh, so I think that uh, that this is the only way to to be seen in, in, in this current uh, musical landscape and uh, it may it might be harder in the beginning but eventually I think this this will make it even easier wonderful and when you talk there about you know um, the, the current musical landscape and you know uh, it, it, how Mayan face different challenges I mean as we're all aware the way in which we create and distribute music has changed a great deal and as has the music industry where both its internal and external factors are miles away from what they once were and as yeah. Mayan was like only conceived in 2010 did you find that it was presented with a very different set of challenges as opposed to the ones you faced when you guys you know first broke out onto the scene prior seven or eight years ago yeah I, I noticed that uh, that uh, all the bands that got uh, uh, founded after like uh, 2008 or 2009 and uh, it's not a specific uh, time but but the, the newer bands there's this really little amount of bands that make it to the next level so 
for some reason it, it got more difficult and uh, that's that's uh, what we're facing with Mayan and uh, but I still think that we we can we can make it and already we are we already have a quite uh, nice fan base but uh, to, to to really make it to to a next level that that uh, that's a different story but I, I that, that's what I said I really love challenges and I think it's possible even though it's more difficult nowadays than, than I think some some years ago uh, but it's still possible Absolutely, and I mean, you guys are so committed to my aunt. You can see it. I mean, whether it's your lineup changes or whether you're kind of rotating members for you know who have other tour commitments, you guys still always find a way to go out there and make it happen. Yeah. So no one can take that away from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, there was one guy. He said to me, he, he said like, I've seen Mayan uh, nine times. And none of these times was the same. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way, so exactly. He said, "I never know what I can expect, and all the time, there's there's a different guy. But every time, I'm ent I'm entertained. <laughs> so and it keeps and it fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, Mark, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, man. And obviously, Mayan is the prime focus at the moment. But I was fortunate enough to chat with, of course, yourself, and more recently with Simone. And a couple of the things we talked about were, you know, the Epica versus Attack on Titan release, as well as the band's upcoming book, The Essence of Epica, which she yeah. promises to be a very honest retelling of the band's career. So I'm stoked to read it. So I'm wondering, is it possible for you to help pierce any more of that anticipation as to what's next on the horizon for Epica, whether it's the, you know, Attack on Titan, the book, or if you've started writing, or whatever you think you can share, man? Yeah, at this moment, indeed, we are very busy with the book, so I'm also collecting uh, pictures, uh, old pictures that I find on my old computers, and uh, I'm also collecting uh, uh, old, old uh, uh, yeah, things that I find. What what can be interesting for the for the book, and uh, besides that, uh, I, I wrote one song already for for future Epica re release. Wonderful. But, but we will have a lot of time now because uh, we will probably hit the studio the end of uh, 2019. So there's plenty of time to write new stuff, and that's also uh, intentionally like this that we don't rush it too much this time. Of course, man, of course. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your insights. Sure. And, man, the record is great. So I just wish you the very best of luck with everything you have this year and next year. And I'm really looking forward to hanging out again sometime. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. All right, man, always a pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.